So how do you fly up over the top of a mountain in the middle of the winter in freezing cold temperatures and still be no problem flying all winter? So there are a couple of tricks we've learned over the years, so I will go through them. Uh, let's see, where do we start? First, we'll give you this trick. Shin and knee guards. Not so much because you're going to fall down, but because it blocks the wind from the front of your legs. When your knees are bent, even if you have a heavy snowsuit, it puts kind of a cold spot. And so by wearing just some lightweight shin and knee guards, you literally don't even need snow pants. I just go with just normal pants and then, of course, thermal underwear. So this is kind of a neat little trick. Uh, of course, you got your boots, socks, whatever, you know, keeps you warm in the winter as far as that goes. The uh, thermal underwear with regular pants is a whole lot lighter than like a whole snowsuit. So it's all about staying lightweight uh, and being able to be as movable as possible and agile. Okay, the one huge, huge mandatory is you got to have heated gloves. This is critical. Uh, there's two different types that are awesome. Uh, the warm gear works great um, www.warmgear.com uh, is a good one the other one is Gerbing's G3 heated gloves now these are a 12 volt glove just like the Gerbing's they're all 12 volt and 12 volt is not enough <laughs> it, at, at, if it's uh, maybe 35 38 degrees then yeah, above 30 degrees, you might be able to get away with 12 volts. But when it gets down to zero or below zero, you're going to need a heck of a lot more than 12 volts, you know, depending on your body. Some people get colder than others. Uh, so here I'm running just a 4S LiPo, which runs you up to, you know, 15 volts or over 15 volts. So instead of 12 volts, you got 15. Uh, as the temperatures go down, you're going to want all of this plus... If it's really cold, you might even go with a 5S, which I have done most of the time, is a 5S LiPo. So you're pushing 18, 19 volts. Now at 30 degrees, uh, 18 volts will literally burn your hands. But when it's below zero, you're going to want all of that 18, 19 volts. And of course, you have to have a temperature controller so you can control exactly what temperature you like. Because uh, you obviously don't want to light your hands on fire. <laughs> That's a bad plan. Uh, okay. The uh, Then, other few tricks. You have to have a lightweight carbon fiber helmet. And, of course, get this from U-TurnUSA.com. You just give us a call. Very lightweight carbon fiber uh, with a full face shield. Doesn't have to be too fancy. Another helmet that works is a snowmobile helmet. Uh, it does have dual visors. The problem with snowmobile helmets is the visibility. They're designed for looking forwards and not up and not really down. Where with this helmet, you can look up, and when you look up, you cannot see the helmet at all. All you see is up. So it's important to have a good full-face helmet, but also have the ability to still look up at your glider. If not, the snowmobile helmet is a good option. They're like 59 bucks or whatever. Okay, you still, that's not going to keep you warm. That kind of keeps the air off of you. So you top that off with a ski mask, of course, down. And then you use a turtleneck up. So you pull the turtleneck up over the top of the ski mask. Then that totally blocks your neck. Also, with some good sleeves, you pull these sleeves all the way out of the jackets uh, and make sure that these go up inside your gloves really well so that you don't get your wrists cold. If you got a big old crack or you got your sleeves in your inside your jacket, then you're going to get a cold spot on your wrist. So a nice turtleneck will have nice stretchy long sleeves and it has that long neck to bring up over the helmet. Then for body, again, it's about light weight. You don't necessarily want a big, honking, bulky snow jacket because they're super heavy. Uh, this jacket, again, you get it from us, totallyawesome.com. This is one of the world's lightest down jackets. This whole jacket is like three ounces. It's just ridiculously light. Super, super light jacket. Um, down, 
crazy warm. This jacket is insanely warm, even though it doesn't look that big. Also, this particular jacket balls up the size of a baseball and you flip it inside its own pocket. So you reverse the pocket and then stuff the jacket into its own pocket and you end up with a whole jacket the size of a baseball. Super lightweight. Then put a, uh, a nice liner over it so you got a windbreaker, like a Gore-Tex windbreaker to stop the wind. This does stop the wind. You could stick with just that, um, but I do layer it up and put an extra jacket on. Um, now, an important feature to the jacket is you want one that has zippers under the arms like this so you can open a hole directly under your arm plus you have inside pockets why because that's where you run the temperature controller you stick it out the hole under your arm and then you zip the zippers down on it locking it so it can't pop back in that way your temperature control is right there by your side whenever you need it and it has that easy access and goes straight into your pocket works awesome so if you can find a nice lightweight jacket that has zippers under the arm so you can actually have a hole clear into your body works great uh, so there we go we've pretty much got it covered uh, another little trick to go and flying in the winter time is before you put all this on you want to go out and get your gear ready, get your motor run up, all ready to go and warmed up. Because once you put this stuff on, if you're running around and setting up and too much, you're going to start sweating because obviously it's very, very warm. And on the ground, you don't need that much warmth as you do in the air. So get the gear set up, basically ready to go. Then throw on all your warm gear and then go launch as soon as you can so that you can get in the air without before you start working up a sweat. And bingo, bango, boing. Very, very interesting stuff. All these little things over the years for being prepared for the winter time in case you go down. And of course, if you end up in the middle of Alaska wilderness, you know, that is a mandatory. So cool stuff. Let's go flying all winter. Winter's like the coolest time ever to fly because uh, the air is cold and thick all day long. And you can just do things in the winter that you just can't do in the summer. Like the whole world is your playground. Fly all day long and it's generally glass smooth everywhere. You can go around trees, behind trees, in behind gullies, you know, and it's a lot of times you get that very calm winds, perfectly still, stable conditions. And it is a total blast flying in the winter, in the snow. And especially on skis, you can launch on skis. So, okay, let's get dressed up properly and go flying. Booyah.